Hey, hey, happy Thursday. <clears throat> hey, Business Accelerators. How is everyone doing? Hope everybody's uh, staying safe and staying home and being careful and all those good things. Uh, tonight, we have an incredibly special guest with us uh, this evening, uh, Cynthia Zenti, who is, uh, we'll call it all things genius when it comes to sales. Uh, <laughs> got, got a background and a history that, uh, from a sales standpoint, that really and truly is uh, magical. Um, so anyway, welcome, Cynthia. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you want to do a quick intro and then we'll just kind of jump into it. Well, thanks for having me here. Now, that's quite the intro. I like this. What was it? Magical and genius in the same sentence there? Absolutely. As, as many of those. Go with that. I'm just going <laughs> to go with that. So, um, yeah, well, thank you for having me here. It's been uh, awesome getting to know you both over the last few months and what you do in your business, too, and, and helping us entrepreneurs putting it all together and having some management structure. So thank you for that. Um, so yeah, I'm a sales trainer, sales coach. I focus on giving people executable skills, skills that they can use in their business real time. Yes, there's high level strategy involved in some of the things that I do, but I really focus on helping people learn sales skills that are going to convert their leads into customers and how to structure conversations around that. You know, I think one of the most important things that, quite honestly, that I've learned from you over the last several months in conversations and, and post is, is just that it's a strategy that's involved and being able to subtly pick up on cues that tell you that you are going in the right direction or perhaps you're not going in the right direction and being self-aware enough to be able to make that adjustment. So that, that in itself is pretty cool. Well, it's seeing those flags in the road, right? It's like, oh, why am I going down that rabbit hole? It's not going to help me any. But also having a way to come back because human conversations, right? The way we talk to each other is it's never really a linear process, right? And now it used to be when, you know, if you can imagine 10, well, pre-internet, like if you would go shopping for a car, you know, you would maybe look through the newspapers and do a little bit of research, whatever you could, right? And then when you went into the dealership, they were the ones that had all the information, right? So you would be relying on those people, but now our buyers are coming to us and often they know more than we do about what they want. So we have to have a way to stay relevant to them. So what we say in our conversations has to we have to articulate what's important to them in a way that they're actually able to hear it. So that's, you know, some of the things that you're right. We have to, you know, have an idea of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Yeah. You, you brought up something important there, especially if uh, for our audience, if they're in a, in a business where you're selling multiple things, whether it's a product or service, Yes, um, you're right. Because the people have the ability to do so much research in today's world, you know, it, it's always challenging for the, the salesperson because uh, the customer can come in and they can know everything about one particular product or service because that's what they've honed in on. But the reality as a salesperson, you've got to know a whole bunch about a whole bunch of different products and services. And so it becomes that much more challenging and being able to hone in on those communication skills or those flags so that you can adjust your conversation based on what the customer already knows or doesn't know for that matter. That's or, or what they assume it to mean to them because that's another thing that we have to figure out as well right because they could learn say you know the benefits or the features of something and assume it means something to them but it actually in real life when it plays out it's going to show up something different so it's understanding um and I'm always yeah. always asking questions I don't know if you guys are the same way but I mean I'm naturally very curious so being in sales has always been a good fit for me because I'm like what do you mean by that tell me I want some clarity right so I mean those are honestly my that's kind of my catchphrase can you tell me more about that because I don't understand what it means to people our language is so freaking ambiguous it makes me crazy sometimes right you know right Oh, I tell you. Um, so when, yeah, when they come to us and say, well, I want this because of this, you know, I want yellow because this is how I'm feeling today. But really what we know is that they, they really need green based on what they're telling us. I, it's like, well, how do I transition them over to here? Or how do I talk about that? Like, what do we kind of focus on to get them to understand what it is they really want 
you know, our job is really just to make their decision, help them make a decision, help them make the right decision and quicker. <clears throat> right. Really, I mean, you know this, and we want to, you, I know you guys have the same approach that we go in as kind of trusted advisors, right? And it's more of a collaboration rather than just, you know, hey, you know what you need today. I got a great deal on this used car. Let me just tell you, I'm Slick Willie. I've got all the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You so get the for, sorry, sorry get I interrupted for one second. So for anybody just jumping on, we were having a technical difficulty. It didn't go live to Facebook. So mm. this is, <laughs> we're talking about fearless selling with Cynthia Zente, who's Brandy introduced is a fabulous sales coach who, like she calls her company, takes the fear out of selling, which is people's big obstacle, right? They don't want to talk to people they don't know. They don't know what they're going to say. I remember a funny, a funny story about fearless selling. When I worked in a real estate office, I remember my coworker's mom, and she was talking about how she got him to start dialing, you know, for clients in real estate. It was hilarious because she literally went up there and said, just pick up the damn phone. If they hang up on you, move on to the next one. And that was what got him over. But she was kind of scary in a short Italian lady kind of way. So I probably would have picked up the damn phone too. <laughs> yeah, I think people so are uh, people are afraid of rejection. And, yeah. and, and at the end of the day, the customer is afraid of being sold right? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be sold. Whether it's an email, you get random messages, you get whatever, and we all get them, whether again, email messages on Facebook or various social media, and you know exactly what they're going for. Um, oh, the, coming through Messenger is my favorite. Yeah. Hey, girl. You never met me. I like the ones who are always messaging me like, hey, do you want me to help you sell stuff? <laughs> can you elaborate on what's I've been doing this for right. 40 years. What? Huh? Yeah, can, you, can you tell me more? <laughs> oh, I often, well, I, I don't do that anymore, but there was a time when I did. But you know what, you hit on some key points there that if I could take a second just to talk about, you know, the fear around selling, a lot of it comes from not having exposure to proper techniques and style, and that not everybody really is aware of that there's formats and and reasons for doing the things that you do. And when you get a few skills under your belt, it takes the resistance away from that. And knowing of how you want to talk about things really helps. But the number one thing is to get out of the place where it feels like it's you and that you're there just coming from a place of service and can I fix this? Because first of all, we even have to establish if we can help or fix it. So it's not like, oh my God, there's so much pressure on me because I have to help them and do they, and I need them to buy. We first of all, I have to figure out if we can even help them, right? So taking that, taking a step back and allowing that space, as you're saying, no one wants to be sold to, but when you give people space to actually just sit with things for a second, right? When you give them information, give them 10 seconds to breathe, right? Rather than the constant barrage of things coming at people, just chill. I right? couldn't agree more. It gives them an opportunity to catch up <clears throat> because they're, they're learning new information. And when you go into the sales process, it's super important that you make it about the client or the customer and their needs because they're coming to you or however the, the initiate, initial conversation started because they have a need. Now there's a couple of different needs and I'm sure you can elaborate. There's the, uh, the emotional need, kind of what yeah. they think they need. And then there's the true need. And as yes. a salesperson, it's super important to, as you mentioned earlier, ask a lot of questions to identify, is it an emotional need or do they really have a true need? And then as you mentioned, slow down as you're giving information and allow them to, to, to catch up in the conversation and to really process all the information. Yeah, I actually, how I tend to look at it is, you're right, identifying those needs, because like, people will come to us and, you know, people either say it's health, wealth, or relationship, right? I actually see things showing up mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, and relationships. And so they may come for you, like financial health, like say someone who's an entrepreneur, like I need more, I need more sales. It could mean that 
um, you know, it, it's affecting many things in their business. Yes, they may need more sales. Maybe it's because they're not closing the leads they already have, or, you know, maybe they're not profitable in what it is they're doing. Their margins aren't big enough. You know, their operating costs are too high. It can also mean that I'm freaking out because I'm not really good at managing my finances and I'm spending way too much on marketing or way too much on lifestyle and it's affecting my family life and I'm being sharp with everybody, right? Like it, it, there's always more to it and more and more layers. And the more we get into it, which is why I love helping people understand the sales process and really the art of asking questions is that you're able to start getting into those layers so people really understand the impact of what it's having on their life because it usually does encompass more than one thing, yeah. right? It shows up as stress. It shows up as, you know, um, scarcity, you know, just all sorts of different things. So yeah, well, I do. A lot of people come to us and they come and they say, well, I need blah, but they almost never need blah. Because I no. was telling him earlier, I'm always like, is the problem what they really think the problem is? Or is the problem yeah. what they think it is? And usually right? it's bigger. They don't know well, what the problem is. And that's why they rely on people, you know, like yourselves or people who really know what your product is and how it helps. They re they're relying on you to do that digging and do that research, right? And understand what their problem really is. Yeah. Right. And so even with spelling, like, what is your problem? Is your problem you won't open your mouth? Is your problem you don't like your product? Is your problem you're afraid of other people? Like, what, what is it? Yeah, exactly, Hillary. There's always so much to it, but it doesn't mean it has to be so much to learn. Sales is a living, breathing thing. Like your sales process is a living, breathing thing. It's constantly changing as your clients constantly change and as you constantly change. The questions I ask now at this stage of my life, because, you know, older, wiser, smarter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, but the questions I ask now at this part in this stage of my business are different than things I asked, you know, 10 years ago, right? Because I have a I have a deeper understanding. I have a breadth of knowledge, right? So I'm able to get to solutions for people quicker, right? Because I understand how it plays out quicker. Right. Right. That's and the true problem. Yeah. Uh, well, that's just it. And that's why, you know, I really wanted to go with the fear less selling. Not that we have to go out there and be brazen about it and absolutely fearless, but we are taking the fear out of it because it's really just connecting and like you would be hanging out with your best friend or something is trying to understand what their problem is, but then matching it up with a business strategy that becomes monetary as well for, you know, us, because, you know, my favorite saying, you can't have transformation without a transaction. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. right? Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate because the, the word selling has yes. a negative connotation because of various industries that we've all been exposed to. And, and I think that with your approach, it really takes, it takes the negativity out of it and it really makes it more about the mindset. And you've touched on it several times about, you know, you're building a relationship with whoever your potential client might be. And you have to be able to share information and learn enough to build trust between that person. And yeah. then really, uh, what's the saying? I think it was Warren Buffett that, you know, selling is just a transaction, a transaction of services for money. Yeah. 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 I, I did a post with that too. Yeah. yeah so it's, I thought. Yeah. So it's the selling is the exchange of value for money. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so it's the most broken down granular definition of selling. But as we know, there's so much more to it, especially in today's world because of the education of a client and or a customer, the advancements in technology, the yeah. resources that are available that could potentially make a person or parts of their job obsolete or automated. And so being able to really provide value and build that relationship, I think in today's world is even more important than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. Absolutely, because there's so many other people too and what is, I think, really important is when you're first engaging with somebody is to, because is your positioning as well, is like to show some insight based on your knowledge and exposure, because there's so many people out there 
who are going to have different levels of experience and success than what say you might have, because you, Randy and Hillary, have been in business for a while. You really know your stuff, right? As compared to somebody else who's saying they know your business, but really doesn't have the breadth of knowledge that you do, right? Because I see that all the time in the coaching world. Like everybody's, <laughs> there's a lot of, right? It's like everybody's coaching something, but it's like, or the certified, but you're like certified in what? What What are you certified in? Like you didn't get, you don't have any experience to back your certificate. Right. Yeah. Like it's, mm -hmm. you know, there's got to be some way. So when you do have an experience, and even if you say don't have the certification per se, but you've been doing it for a while and you have life experience, you know, to open a conversation with that, you know, what I'm hearing you say is, you know, you want a car. In my experience, people who have wanted my car, who have wanted a car, you know, about 50% of those have wanted a car because they want to be able to drive to work, right? So being able to get that insight and engagement right away, it's changing your positioning. So yes, you're building relationships, but you're still going through it from a place of authority, right? And then it becomes more collaborative that you set the stage that you're, you're not just hanging out buddies, but it's a business transaction. Right, you can still be cordial and you can be nice and you can build absolutely a business for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I love that because now, you know, with Zoom and stuff like that, we do have the ability to pick up and be intimate with people in this kind of situation. Um, and but we can still make it very professional as well, which I think for some people it's it's um you know, when you don't have a process and structure, it's very easy to go down the buddy route. And like, we're going to become friends. But then when you get to the point where you have to ask for money and it, the, the business transaction comes in, it becomes very difficult. And that's where fear can come from because it's like, oh my gosh, now how do I ask them for money? Because we've been hanging out. Yeah, we're, we're pals now. It's the whole like, I'm going to do this for you for free. Oh, wait, I don't want to do this for free anymore. Well, and then you be, end up becoming, you know, bitter and almost resentful, right? And But it's only yourself to blame because you didn't structure it properly. Right. Well, so, yeah. A lot of insight. And you mentioned it a moment ago with, you know, 40 years of, of selling experience and certainly correct the details. But if I recall, you started cold calling for someone as a, a young teenager, just selling... 15. Vacuum cleaners, I think. Is that what it was? No, car but close. Carpet cleaning. Carpet cleaning. I was cold yeah. calling for carpet cleaning pro products. And you know, for only $49.95, we'll clean your living room, hall, and dining room. <laughs> there you That's go. even cheaper than, uh, what's well, that company called? Uh, Stair uh, I don't know. Uh, Steve Master. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just know that that's what the script was. <laughs> yeah. I think it was only six hundred. Feet. Yeah, know. and I think with your your vast experience, and I know you I know you've been in a lot of different industries and a lot of different fields, and, and I also know that you've got a, a program to you know, yes. the fearless selling. If you'd like to talk a little bit about that for the audience, yeah. and maybe share some sure. contact information and that sort of thing. Sure, and thank you for that. Um, so the signature program I run, which is a four week intensive, it runs. I do it every five weeks. I give myself a week off in between to oh. readjust. So it's built on creating your sales process. And what that allows you to do is you have a repeatable, proven repeatable system that every single time you get into a sales type transaction, you can rely on this system, this process that you can start measure tracking and increasing your closing ratios. So what you're doing is you're looking at everything from your sales scripts, what your customer wants, to what your product offers, your features and benefits, and you're putting those together in a way that you can have agility in your conversations. No matter what your customer talks about, you're gonna know what your program offers so well that you can articulate it again in a way that's relevant to your customer to help them make that decision. Right. Relevance and decision, those are the, my two favorite words, right? So that's what we do. And the beauty about that where I'm really seeing uh, the benefit, an increased benefit for this or an unexpected benefit is that when people are going to start outsourcing and hiring sales team, they have a documented process now that they can share. So onboarding a salesperson, they're just like, well, here it is. These, this is our value proposition. This is how we talk about it in a way that's authentic and real and, you know, represents the values and the, the 
the um, the thoughts and the ideologies of the company as well. So that's what I do. I do that every four weeks. Um, and then I do one-on-one -on -one and then sales auditing and and uh, coaching as well. That's that's privately I do that, but yeah. Is your program specifically for women or you do women and men? Um, primarily I do it through women because okay. most of the groups and stuff I belong to are for women, but I do have men in my group as well, which it brings a whole different perspective to it as well. But it's more or less, it's not specifically for men or women. It's people who are um, more of a philosophy that, you know, we're value driven, we're customer centric, right? It's about right. inclusion and, you know, equal opportunity for everybody. Right. So if and somebody comes in and they're like, you know, I got to say, you know, the bro code where it's like, you know, the the old boys way of selling. I w actually wouldn't have them in the group because I really believe in in our values. Well, that would intimidate a lot of people, even some men that were new to selling. Yeah, I think just having some rapport with everybody that you're involved with that 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 in itself is super important because it, it's got to feel like a safe zone. It's got to feel comfortable and it's got to feel like you can participate and be involved without yes. ridicule or whatever else. Well, you know what I, what we do to, you know, this, this, the success of the program comes from the fact that it is a container that's safe so people can practice because we don't want to practice on our customers, right? right? So even throughout it, we do breakout groups and stuff like that, like breakout rooms through our trainings so that we're getting different perspectives and people are actually using and, and incorporating the material into their their life right now, rather than just sitting through a course and then trying to figure out how to do it later. So it's very interactive, which is really is what's made it so successful. So very yeah, exactly great. to your point. Sure. So to wrap it up, this is a million dollar question everyone wants to know right now. What do you think about low cost sales? Like, what do I think about low cost sales? Like, you I mean, know, like people, like I sell you a $37, whatever, but really, my core offer is $5,000. What do you think about that philosophy? You know what? I think it's just a different business model. I think it just really is because some people are selling $37 packages, but the value, and I bought some of those, actually, I probably bought too many of those, <laughs> but I bought some of those that are absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Like yeah. absolutely brilliant. And it's given me exposure to them as, um, you know, other things they offer, which maybe I do, or maybe they don't. I mean, if it's their business model and that's all they want to do, if it's working for them, like I, I honestly don't see it good or bad because if they're getting products out there. Yeah, as you said, if they're offering something of value and it, it, the market will bear it and people are getting something out of it. I mean, you could sell five thousand thirty-seven dollars courses a month, or one five thousand. Oh, so okay, I'll share an example with you. Um, so I have a friend in the UK, and she's um, she's a doctor. She's a uh, it's, she has a doctorate in like neurology or something like that. But a doctorate like neuro health or something. Yeah. I, and she's also a kinesiologist and, uh -huh. you know, a physical trainer and all these things. So she released a program for people over 60 to do Pilates, but without having to get on the floor. So it's like floorless Pilates, right? You can do it sitting, standing, whatever. So it's getting them, helping them with balance and things like that. So she sells it. She launched it in the UK for $29.99. She's selling it here now. Well, in the, U in the US, for $59. She has sold thousands of these programs but it's getting people moving right so the value to that is incredible that you know people who had no mobility and couldn't get around are now up and walking oh, but okay. she's made it at a price point that's accessible to people so that's right? part of a lot of people's problem with anything knowing where to start knowing how to start just starting and she, you know, in this way, she can reach the masses, right? And help a lot of people. But if she priced it at four or $500, then suddenly it's not accessible to everybody. You know, even my program, my four-week program that I do, you know, I've been hounded to death by coaches saying, you know, other people chime in, like, it should be thousands of dollars. I'm like, but then it's not accessible to everybody, right? So I believe that it has to be what's right for people. 
and what their business model is, right? When I mean, you I have one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? Yeah. And I mean, that's at a much different price point right. as well, right? Because it's really intensive. Not like, I mean, you're face intensive, but it, you know, it's very focused work, right? Well, the so, other one gets you started if you don't have the money or you're not like sure exactly. So you don't want to be the focus of everything all the time. Well, but yeah, you might not need the one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe you just want to have some, you know, some skills and it, you might not be ready for it. Yeah. Right. For the one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah, it's, you know, it's, I think it's good to have options. I think so too. I think having a variety for those that either feel more comfortable in a one-on-one -on -one setting or feel more comfortable in the group setting, um, because there's people that really work both ways. You know, some people want to kind of blend into the group a little bit and some, yeah. I don't want anybody else to know what I'm doing. I want to speak one-on-one. -on -one. I want to get full, full bang for the yeah. buck. So. And I get, you know, say entrepreneurs who are kind of stuck at that, you know, they're maybe at that two hundred thousand dollar range or so yeah. and they're trying to scale and i don't quite know how to do that you know they'll want you know i'll work with them to make sure they've got everything all their processes in place all their skills in place how to bring other people on like how to hire for sales people that type of thing right so it really depends and it's very specific then to their business right and that's all they want to talk about they don't want to share my time with anybody they just you know what it's like, right? They're just like, I want all of you. <laughs> you don't want to sit that, in a, that's in a, great. We don't like groups. <laughs> yeah, sit in a group meeting and for various times, 10 minutes of it, they're talking to someone else about their issues and their problems and their their systems. Well, that's great, but that doesn't apply to me. So uh, why yeah. am I sitting here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, pleasure talking to you guys. Yeah, if you want to drop some some contact information in the link, you know, website or, or Facebook or however you I, I will. And actually, I do have a guide that if people want it, and it's um it's a coach's guide to it's like 10 questions, like how to ask more effective questions. Like here's 10 questions you can ask that are for your sales consultations that are going to be more thought provoking than just hey. <laughs> and I would highly recommend that. I, would, I have a copy of that downloaded on my right. computer because you posted it once before. It's fantastic. Okay, perfect. I will come back and drop a link in the comments then. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks so much for having me, you two. It's so yeah. nice to see you. Yeah, thank great. you. Well, I will be in touch. Thanks again for joining us and uh, have a wonderful afternoon or evening. Thank you. You too. <laughs> okay, talk soon. Bye. Bye.